Welcome to this video from MSK Sonography. I am John Ostrovskis. Today we're covering an introduction to Morton's neuroma. Yes, we're hitting the big topics here. You know the scenario, you've been to your lower limb masterclass on the weekend. It's Monday morning, your first patient on your list. They have classic signs of Morton neuroma. They feel like they're walking on pebbles. They have pain in the metatarsal heads. You know you should find something. So you turn your machine on, full of confidence, you adjust your presets, place your transducer on the patient, and you're faced with the fibroadipose neurovascular snowstorm that you can't get out of. So the first thing we're going to do today, we're going to go through the tissue planes with an, a demonstration of anatomy, so you understand what you're looking for. We're going to follow this up with a live demonstration showing you how to control the region of interest. So we're going to use a long axis dorsal approach, which is supported by many authors. So you can potentially differentiate between bursal pathology and neural pathology. And with this, there's a test, there's a trick or two that you need to know to help coax the picture out if you're having difficulty. And we're going to finish off with a quick reminder of a short axis planter view so that you can test for your molders sign. So straight on to the anatomy demonstration. So with our model here representing neural tissue, nerve tissue from proximal to distal, the nerve courses from deep to superficial represented in this fashion. The nerve also splits and just to be kind we can have the nerves resting here so that's the nerves there and this change in course going from the deep field the far field to the near field occurs just before the metatarsal heads represented by the closed fists here so here you've got the phalanx that's the level of the metatarsophalangeal joint deep to the metatarsal heads is the deep intermetatarsal ligament shown by this so already we're starting to layer our view from the dorsal aspect where we've got a, a ligament above the nerve. What sits above the actual nerve, the ligament tissue, is the bursa, represented by the BOSU ball. So when we're looking directly over the metatarsal head, we find the line of the metatarsal head in long axis, and so the metatarsophalangeal joint, then we come off, off the bone into this region here. And we should simply be able to easily see the bursa, the ligament, and the nerve. But it unfortunately doesn't work as easily as that, because as we go laterally, the actual metatarsal heads are more proximal, which skews our view a little. So as we're scanning through, if we just scan straight through laterally, we're actually sort of then in a bit of no man's land because we lose our perspective. What we need to do first is to scan through the metatarsal head and first of all, forget about the structures in the space, is find the angle to the next metatarsal head, to the adjacent more lateral metatarsal head. It might feel as though you're sliding back 30 to 45 degrees. Once you've found that, you'll see that the metatarsal head is then coming up in the same region on your screen, and that controls your region of interest. And we'll show you that during the live scanning demonstration. And as we go through, we should be able to make out this far field to near field change in direction. And if there's a bit of bursal distension, we can then press through that area. And if it's a bursal pathology, one can usually see some movement of tissue. If it's more of a neural fibrotic pathology, there will be a sense that there is no actual physical movement within that on applying pressure in that long axis dorsal attitude there. Uh, that's it, and that's what we're going to demonstrate in a moment, and then we'll demonstrate, and you can see from the Mulder's test, if one is doing that, if you squeeze the metatarsal heads together, if there's bursal distension, the bursal fluid, the bursa will push down through 
So we're scanning on the line of the second metatarsal, metatarsophalangeal joint now. And as we were describing before, with the joint being in this area here, if we go straight across with the transducer, we find that the third metatarsophalangeal joint is actually over here on the screen. So we need to find the line of the metatarsals so that we find it in the same area. Otherwise, the region of interest is too large and non-specific. So if we go back to the original, and the aim initially isn't to view what's in between, it's just to come out at the same point with the next joint. And you can see that we're a little bit better there. And you might have to, with each patient, scan through a few times just to get that line as good as it can be. And then the region of interest in the space is just this area here. And as we we're discussing with the anatomy, that the nerve should follow from proximal in, is in the deep field. As we go distal, it'll be, become closer to the near field. So we can already see some structures around this area. So we're going to go back to the second metatarsal, follow that line. And just with my thumb in, in that metatarsal space, just pushing and you can actually see some mobile tissue there in our region of interest and we're just going to in a moment scroll back to this picture because we can actually see a bit of fluid is that painful there is that painful no okay and this patient is unsymptomatic asymptomatic So there's some evidence of fluid in that region through here. So if you look closely, we can start to differentiate on the screen here, this area being the area of the transverse intermetatarsal ligament, this being the plane of the nerve, and it starts to course up through here. And this here, I would say is bursal tissue, and there's some fluid around this area. And if we go back to that shot, just to review what we were looking at, I'd say this is definitely the bursal neuroma complex through this area here. And now we're in short axis on the plantar aspect, with that being the second metatarsal, that being the third, through the space there. And if we squeeze, one can see that there's movement of some tissue there, but with this patient being asymptomatic, but there being some probable sort of bursal fluid, there is some movement through there, but we do not see any molders sign there, or any click. So what I suggest you do, in the first instance, is just start following the plane of the metatarsal heads, trying to get them to pop up in the same part of the screen. Once you've achieved that, then go into the space and then start to look at superimposing your mind the line of the nerve going from the far field to the near field. And in that region, start looking at what the structures are like, push around a little bit, try to get things moving, and you should start to make some sense of what would otherwise be a snowstorm. Now it's your turn to give it a try.